This represents a rocker that's near and dear to my heart because I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. He's been rocking in it and making me want to play a Les Paul guitar since I was a wee little Benny Goodman. Today we talk about the Joe Perry Les Paul Gold Rush Axis. See, I just gotta grab my drink. I got cotton mouth. Ah, delicious. Notice how it's caffeine free. I make caffeine nervous. I love a single pup. Les Paul. Is it more usable? No. Is it logical? Absolutely not. Does it give you more tonal variations? Of course not. It's like a piece of bread without the butter. I get it. But there's something sexy about just a one pup Les Paul with just two knobs. I mean, first off, four knobs is too many for me because I can't even remember. That's why I use two knobs. The thing that's so cool about it is that it just doesn't seem right, you know, if you're a traditionalist, because you have this gold, beautiful, bullion, Les Paul, gold rush, as they call it, at the Gibsonville. But then you got one pup, and they didn't do that in the 50s. They didn't. I mean, Eddie Van Halen took out a pup in his 59 and probably pissed off every traditionalist, but it was also Eddie Van Halen. Joe Perry's a guy like my friend, and I'm so excited to call him a friend, Billy Gibbons, where he likes the strange, you know, the Fender Strat with the headstock going like the wrong way, or like a Telecaster headstock on a Strat, or an SG with a Les Paul custom headstock. Billy Gibbons and Joe Perry are like, let's just mix up the gene pool with our guitars. And this is an example of that, because you know, Joe's been touring forever, and he has a, a guitar tech. So the great thing about having only one pickup is that he only needs it for a song, and then he just goes, and it gets a 59 Les Paul and it's got, oh wow, it's got a rhythm pickup and then I can do the solo for Walk This Way. So I don't know what song Joe Perry plays this thing on, but I can tell you that I want to play everything on this guitar. Because first off, it's just so simple, but again, it's, it's strange because it's a modern guitar with a lot of vintage feel, so it's kind of a mind screw. And that's because you got this aged, finish so it's got the perfect checking. I mean almost so perfect that like do you even believe it but like it's the symmetrical checking. So instead of having like a nice flame top you got a nice cracked gold top. And it's it's sexy to me. It looks like some people put out their cigarettes and oxidize some pennies and crap on here. Uh, dinged and danged it which makes it you don't have to worry about it so much. That's cool. And if you look at the back you got what I call proof of life. Now, it's not real life. Because again, I, I, the one thing I'll say about this, this aging is it's, it's, it's just so perfectly symmetrical that I don't think I've ever seen a guitar with aging like this. But it doesn't matter because it feels nice and this is the way it came from the factory. And in fact, if you look at the headstock, it's the way it came from Joe Perry from Gibson because this is the artist proof number three. What do you do when you're Joe Perry and you're wandering around your, your mansion with your, your Les Pauls in the front yard and you're just like wearing your chains at seven o'clock in the morning smoking your cigar? Maybe not anymore because you know he couldn't breathe for a while. Doing his thing and making his eggs with his hair all crazy with his Villa Lago stripe up there looking all rock and roll and he's like what do I do? Like oh I have friends. Gibson sent me a bunch of these guitars. I'm just gonna let people know how much I love them with a single pup Les Paul, a 498T nonetheless, which is a nice, hot, screaming, freaking awesome pickup, which we'll check out. And a two point VS100N Wilkinson Tremolo, which is just wild. It's not something you see on a Les Paul very often, and I'm not a Floyd guy. So I guess if you're gonna risk going out of tune for a Les Paul, why, why lock yourself down with a Floyd when you can just have a two-point Wilkinson? I'm with you, Joe. And up here we have a chrome-plated brass roller nut. I haven't ever seen one of these things. And you know, I'm confused about brass because Paul Reed Smith says it's not that resonant, but then you have all these Les Pauls from the 70s that have these brass nuts, and some people are like, dude, it sounds awesome because it's brass. And other people are like, dude, I changed it because it was brass. But apparently, Joe Perry wants his brass nut to be hidden underneath chrome and it's a roller nut. So I guess if you're doing your whammy dive bombs like at the end of Ragdoll. Perfect. And then you have these Grover kidney tuners which are just standard fare. And of course on the headstock, you've got Joe freaking Perry's signature on it. 
But again, let me, lest me remind you that this is his artist's signature model. So this is the one they sent out before the 25 that they had that were aged and signed by Joe Perry himself. Well, he didn't age them, but he signed them. And then there's 125 more of these floating around without Mr. Perry's autograph. But the other thing that's cool about it is it's a Les Paul modern access. Look at this, the way the neck hits in. Doesn't have the normal neck joint and a lot of traditionalists are probably wincing right now. It kind of goes in right here. But I gotta tell you, it's really comfortable. And it's light because it's thinner. The thing that really I gravitate towards on this guitar is that the neck just feels at home. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the party that was the 70s and 80s, I'm sure, for the Toxic Twins, as they call them. The guys that want to compete with Keith Richards and Mick Jagger, they're like, oh yeah, Keith? You have your blood transfused? Well, I'm Joe Perry and this is Steven Tyler and yeah, 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 yeah! All right, so the truth is this neck feels at home to me and the way it was described from Gibson on their website, it's a chunky 59 profile. Now, I know a lot of the 59s actually don't have very chunky profiles, but this is kind of a chunky profile and it feels nice. It's not a 58, it's a 59. And I wanted to actually authenticate that so in the back over here, I got this ES335, which is also a 59. It's not quite as chunky as that, but it, it's, it's got the same sort of shape. I'm giving Joe the benefit of the doubt because here right now is an ES355 mono from 1959. Hey, Corey, can you, can you feel this off camera? Do you think that that's a little bit thicker than this thing? It does feel quite thick. Okay, hold on, how about this one? It does feel less thick. Okay. I'm not crazy. So I don't know what 59 profile he's talking about. I have to say that this is probably an in between a 59 and a 58 because it has of a 59, but it's a little bit more 58-ish here, but not quite the baseball bat. I love this guitar. In fact, Jared James Nichols loved this guitar so much. One of the greatest blues players of our time that his old glory, the one that he has from Epiphone, it only has one pup, the same configuration as Joe, because he saw Joe Perry playing it, and he decided, I'm gonna use it all the time. Now, I don't understand, Jared, how you ignore the butter up here. It's an awesome guitar, and you're like 6'8", and you look like you could murder me. In fact, I drank with you in Nashville, and your handshake almost was like a vice, but I, I love you. So what do I have to say about this? Well, first off, Aerosmith rule. <laughs> I was about to go to a different pickup to see if I... It's no different pickup. I'm gonna pull this out though because it splits the pickup. So let's hear what it sounds like as a single coil. Cool. demo we really need to do with this because Joe Perry uses this for probably one song. He may not even use it for a whole song. He's Joe Perry and this guitar's rad. I can't afford it. I wouldn't buy it if I could, but I love playing it and I love representing Boston because, well, Joe Perry's the greatest at being Joe Perry. Why don't you smash that subscribe button already? <laughs>